This week we're tearing down the Brainwave cat ears from Nekomimi. They're a really cool headset with a brainwave sensor that touches your face and then the ears wiggle according to your brainwave activity. They supposedly show when you're alert or when you're distracted. And we had a lot of fun trying them on before taking them apart. To disassemble the Nekomimi cat ears, I found some screws underneath a sticker in the interior and then pried the rest of the plastic apart. The two servos that turn the ears are connected to the main circuit board with these three pin connectors and to walk us through the chips and the hardware on the board, here's Lady Ada. It actually comes with two circuit boards and we detached them, they were soldered together. That's pretty common when you have sub-assemblies, like one part used for multiple products, so or they want to uh, save space, so they'll have two circuit boards and they're soldered together. So this is the, the actual brain sensor EEG interface and uh, there's this nice flexi wire connector and inside are two fine wires that connect to this, and this is the EEG interface board. And, and then it connects with four pins to this board. All the controller does is probably get data from the EEG board and then just translate that into you know what motions it wants to move the ears into. So let's check these out in detail. So these are the two analog inputs. So you've got, this is the ground ear clip connection, the uh, reference voltage, and this is the EEG input. You can say that they solder these and then use a little bit of hot glue to mechanically connect them, which is pretty good quality. And then here is the NeuroSky chip. So it's a TQFP48 um, and it has NeuroSky actually lasered onto it. Now this might be a custom chip, uh, completely custom ASIC that they designed, or it could actually be some other companies such as TI or Linear Analog, they have a chip that does nearly anything it needs like DSP, analog input, microcontroller, and it's customized enough, there's enough firmware modification that they actually got the company to put their own laser markings on it. That's not unusual. I've seen that a couple times. If you're ordering like 10 to 50,000 of these chips, that's something that you can request to make your product maybe a little bit harder to reverse engineer or just kind of add a little bit of uh, pizzazz to uh, the circuitry inside because it's custom. Um, and then here is that connector. It's just a basic solder connector. Also looks like there's some parts here that were not attached. So you can see that, you know, at some point in the future in the past, they're going to have another version of this EEG interface board. And on the back, you get a lot of passives, a lot of markers. Looks pretty good to me. Nice design. And then it attaches to this board. They want to keep the cost low, so they'll go with sort of a generic microcontroller, 8051 core. So that's probably what this is. It's like a 50 cent microcontroller. Not a lot going on here, so probably saving 50 cents, maybe a dollar on the bill of materials. Uh, crystal that goes with it. Uh, a couple of parts. This is probably the, the battery management, uh, cleaning up the power for the microcontroller. And then here are two nice little connectors for the servos. Three pin connectors, plug in the servos. This makes it easy to assemble and also repair. Um, and then over here is some unconnected pads. Almost certainly this is the microcontroller programming interface. So you can pogo pin, program it, and then you put it into the product. So yeah, this is a, a cute little board. I really like it. It's a super nice circuit board, very thin, but really well designed. I, I can tell that whoever did this uh, care deeply about it. We said button on the back. For this and many other teardowns, we use these Adafruit tools. If you've got an idea for a cool wearable like these brainwave cat ears you'd like to see us tear down, post up in the comments and I can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>